Yo, what's up guys? This is James Carter TV. Time for me to recap the Saints and Eagles game. The game that I predicted correctly. I got both of the games here today correct. No matter how close they may be, somehow I got them right. I mean, maybe that shows something. Maybe that shows my football knowledge. But before I begin this video, make sure to click right up there to subscribe for more videos. It helps me. It helps you. That way you get to watch more of me. And you know that's what you need in your life every single time I'm on here. I, I'm doing a service. I'm doing a service to the community that I love to do for you all. Yeah. All right, so anyway, let's get into the game with Saints Eagles. So I mean, this is the game, okay? No matter who wins, we know we have a good grasp of what's gonna take on this week because whenever there's a three and six matchup like this one, they, they, we already know how it's gonna shape up. The winner knows who they're facing next week. And the Saints won, so we already know that they're going to be facing the Seahawks next week. I'll be previewing that at the end of the video. Uh, but for now, let's get into the game. Now, the game was very interesting. I mean, and the first half was a very defensive-oriented first half. I mean, uh, defense all day. Uh, by the end of the first half, it was 7-6. to six. The Saints had been moving the ball on the Eagles for most of the night, but it seemed like every time the Saints would get the ball going, they would get down to the red zone, they would turn the ball over. Uh, a lot of crucial turnovers. Jimmy Graham had a fumble. Drew Brees had two interceptions. All these turnovers came in the first half, and yet somehow the Saints were still only down by one point. But as soon as they eliminated those turnovers, they got back. Sean Payton had a good game plan. They ran the ball successfully. That's what got them to win in this game to me, ultimately, because the Saints are a team that just doesn't know how to run the football this season. I mean, this is not even close to the way they used to be able to run the football years prior, and much better Saints teams to me, to me, much better Saints teams. Um, and this team does not know how to run the football. They are very unsuccessful running the football, and not because they don't have the offensive line for it, but because they don't want to. They just want to throw the football. They're not consistent. They don't have faith in the run, and, and for that reason, they don't trust. Maybe because now, you know, Chris Ivory isn't there, but you traded him. You're the one that decided to trade him. Um, and, and Kyrie Robinson, you know, he's, he made some good plays. Mark, Mark Ingram, I mean, feed this guy. This guy's breaking tackles. This guy's getting yards after first contact. Give this guy some more carries. I think he every time he touches the ball this game, big good things happen for the Saints. They're able to move the ball successfully, and that's what helped propel them to the victory. Uh, the biggest thing, though, uh, when they were down 24 to 23, this is a big thing that I, to me, was the Darren Sproles kickoff return. I mean, this is when the playmakers have to make a play. He made a great play. Uh, he ran the ball out to about the 36-yard line. A horse collar tackle by Kerry Williams of the Philadelphia Eagles. That tacks on 50 more yards. And there you go. The New Orleans Saints are already at midfield. And all they need is a field goal to win the game. You're not going to win games that way. Uh, Drew Brees going to have to make the tough, difficult throws that he hasn't been able to make the whole night. He had not been able to make these throws for the most part all night against, uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles defense. But... When you put the Saints to the 50-yard line, you say, run the ball. We'll let you run the ball on us. You let Kyrie Robinson run all, run all over you. You let Drew Brees, quarterback sneak on in four and third downs. I mean, that's just it. The Eagles got the ball, ran right up their asses, right up the gut at the end of the game, and that's what caught them again. I mean, honestly, it's a well, it's a well game. I mean, it's not like your defense allowed too many points. Your offense didn't score. I mean, your offense was too slow. I mean, it started off too slow. Um, you know, for what Chip Kelly standards, but your offense did put up uh, the game, the go-ahead touchdown. It wasn't enough. And at the end of the day, your defense has to get off the field. They have to stop the Saints on third down. Yeah, it's third and one. It's hard to stop a team on third and one. But you have to man up and you have to do it. You have Fletcher Cox. You have uh, in there, you drafted him to be a big run stopper. Connor Barwin. You got these guys that need to make plays. They couldn't make the plays. At the very important time of the game, and they're out. They bounce out of the playoffs, one and done. Philadelphia Eagles, all this talk. Well, oh, they needed to be Chicago. That way they get the third seed. That way they don't have to go to Seattle. Well, number one, win your playoff game. They didn't do that, and that's why they're out. Stop worrying about, oh, the, that's why I told Eagles fans. I try to tell you, Eagles fans. Well, we need to win. That way we're the third team, and we don't have to go to Seattle. Okay, you're talking like you're going to the Super Bowl. Win your first playoff matchup first because they were either going to face the 49ers, Saints, or Panthers, and those are matchups I did not see the Eagles winning any chance. That was me. That was just my opinion, and guess what? They lost. 
That's why, honestly, I didn't care about the whole Eagles need to get the three. No, I didn't buy it because I did not believe the Eagles were going to win a playoff game against these tough wild card teams. Even the Saints, who cannot win on the road, this is their first uh, road playoff win ever, and yet they here they are. I mean, they're going to Seattle. Now, it's time to preview that matchup, okay? Here's the thing with this matchup to me. I would love to be you Nostradamus know, and pick the New Orleans Saints to win this game, and I'm still going to deliberate, um, but I, I really don't see a chance, because, I mean, this Saints team did not really impress me in this way. This is the best. This is, this is what I find mind-blowing to me. This is the best the Saints defense has looked, I think, in the Drew Brees era. To me. And yet, still, they're not good enough. For some reason, the offense is not consistent enough. They're not good enough on offense. Why? I don't know. You could say maybe they don't run the ball, which is fine. But then again, today, the passing the schemes and everything, I just, I don't know what they're doing. Marcus Colston is not getting involved in the game plan. He had like one catch today, maybe two catches. Kenny Stills, they're trusting him to do things he cannot do. Completely misjudged the ball in a Drew Brees interception, by the way. I mean, these are things that, I mean, I, I can't pick them to win in Seattle, can you? Because I don't see it. I mean, maybe they're going to do what the Indianapolis Colts did because remember, or, or what the Chiefs did, but the Chiefs weren't successful. But the Chiefs, remember, they got blown out at home against Indianapolis. They came out in Indianapolis, and they played a lot better, almost won, but didn't win. But still, I mean, that's a big 180. Can the Saints do in the 180 like that be competitive against the Seattle Seahawks? I don't, I'm not sure. I wouldn't bet on it, you know. I'm not, if I'm a betting man, I'm not putting any stock into it. That's just me. Uh, so, I mean, that's just it for me. So, anyway, that is James Carter TV. Comment down below your thoughts on this game. And tomorrow, we'll be uh, making recaps on the Chargers and Bengals game and on the San Francisco Green Bay game. Early predictions. If you saw my prediction video, you might want to go watch that for my more in depth. But tomorrow, I do have the Cincinnati Bengals and the San Francisco 49ers winning. So, we'll see if I can keep this undefeated record in the playoffs up. Until next time, James Carter TV, I'm out. Check me out next time. Peace.